what we've been discussing so far is based on the spot price, which is the price for immediate delivery of the commodity. In our last lesson, we've mentioned that buyers and sellers can agree on a fixed price for delivery of the commodity at a specified date in the future. Let's now learn how commodity futures are priced. To recap, a futures contract for a commodity is an obligation to the long to buy a stated quantity of the commodity at a stated price on a specified date in the future. The short is obliged to sell according to these terms. The cash is only paid on the settlement date. So for example, an airline, which is an oil consumer, may want to lock in a price for a thousand barrels of oil one year from today at a fixed price. An oil producer may want to take the short position to lock in this sale price. How do we determine an appropriate price for this futures contract? The most obvious approach is to look at the current spot price of oil. Let's say the spot price of a thousand barrels of oil is $60,000. Should the futures price also be $60,000? Not likely. As the airline is able to invest this $60,000 for this period and earn risk-free interest, the fair value that the airline can pay for the oil one year later should take into account the risk-free rate. Therefore, we multiply the spot price by 1 plus the risk-free rate. Moreover, the airline avoids having to pay for the storage of the oil for that period. The storage costs are borne by the short, who is holding on to the barrels of oil. The storage cost should be added to the futures price to compensate the short for bearing the storage costs. However, as the airline foregoes the convenience of physically possessing the oil for its operations, it should be compensated for this inconvenience. As such, the convenience yield should be subtracted from the futures price. And there we have it, the general equation for the commodities futures price. If this equation does not hold, an arbitrage transaction is possible. So as you can observe, the futures price can be lower or higher than the spot price based on the convenience yield. If there is little or no convenience yield, the futures price will be higher than the spot price, a situation termed contango. When the convenience yield is high, futures prices may be less than spot prices. This is known as backwardation. Now, let's assume that the airline enters into a futures contract where the futures price is $57,000 to be settled one year later. The airline is required to place a margin of 10% as collateral. Let's assume that at settlement date, the spot price remains constant at $60,000. We can see that the airline actually profits by $3,000 as it is only paying $57,000 for the oil. This is known as the roll yield, which is the difference between the spot price and futures price at initiation. It's called the roll yield because the futures price rolls towards the spot price as the contract gets closer to expiration. If the contract was initiated in a backwardation situation, as in this case, the roll yield will be positive. If the contract is initiated in a contango situation, the roll yield will be negative. The roll yield is just one component of commodities futures returns. Another component is the change in spot price. Let's say the spot price increased to $65,000 at expiration instead. This increase in spot price is also a form of return to the long. And the third component is collateral yield. Remember this $5,700 margin that the airline posted as collateral? This amount can earn interest for the period in which it is placed as collateral. This interest earned is the collateral yield which should be paid to the airline. And there you have it, the three sources of returns for commodities futures. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At Prep Nuggets, let us do the hard work for you.